many of you who have already worked with function calling in Genii chatbot must be wondering if the same functionality can be leveraged with a co-pilot chatbot. Now, earlier it was very difficult and almost impossible, but now Microsoft has introduced a new functionality with its Azure OpenAI service and it is called Assistance. And here in this course, we are going to integrate Copilot with Azure OpenAI Assistant for custom instructions augmented by function calling. Hi, my name is Neeraj Kumar. I'm a cloud advocate, architect and author and I will be your instructor for this course. Let's get started. This course is divided into three parts. In the first part, we will first try to understand the process flow, how the request will be raised and how it will be processed. And then we will try to configure assistance in the Azure OpenAI Studio. First of all, we'll create a deployment model and based on that model, we will create and configure the assistant for function calling. In the next part of the session, we will create a chatbot in Copilot Studio. We'll create a new chatbot and then we'll also create a topic to be used with assistance. And for the topic to talk to your Azure OpenAI assistant, in part three of this course, we will be creating a power automate flow. This will act as a middleman between your Copilot chatbot and Azure OpenAI assistant. Finally, we will be testing the solution. Let's try to understand the process flow first. So here, the end user will send in a request or a query to the Copilot chatbot. Now, the Copilot chatbot will try to trigger the Power Automate flow, which in turn will trigger the Azure OpenAI Assistant's function calling. Based on the function calling, it will create the response and send it back to your Copilot chatbot via the Power Automate flow. The end user again will provide certain inputs which will again be sent to your Azure OpenAI Assistant. It will try to analyze what inputs have been provided and based on that, it may ask follow-up questions to get all the values that is required for it to process the request. Once all the values and all the parameters have been received, it will let the user know that the request can be processed as all the inputs have been received. If not, it will continue to ask the follow-up questions and all this will happen in a natural language. So let's get into the demo and get started with creating and configuring your Azure OpenAI Assistant. I'm on the homepage of Azure and what we need to do is we need to create an Azure AI services. We can click on search and search for Azure AI service or since I have already created an Azure AI service, that is why it appears on my homepage. I'll click on that. Once I'm there, I can either click on create here on Azure OpenAI account or I can click on Azure OpenAI from here. So if I click on the create button, it will take me to the page where I can create an Azure OpenAI service. I need to select a resource group, the region, I let it remain as East US and I can give it a name say test ATCSL. For the pricing tier, I just have standard S0, I'll select that and click on next. I'll click on next again because I want this service to be accessed from all the networks. I can click on next again on the tags page and finally it will be reviewed. Once everything is fine, I can click on the create button. Since I already have created an Azure AI service, I'll just go to Azure OpenAI and then click on ATCSL Enterprise AI. That is a service I created. So I can click on it. And once the page opens, it will show me the link to go to the Azure OpenAI Studio. Now, here we have the keys and endpoints that we will make use of after we configure our Azure OpenAI Studio. So let me go back to the overview page and once I'm there, I can click on go to Azure OpenAI Studio. This is the modified and updated page. The first thing I'll be doing here is I'll be creating the deployments. So I'll click on deployments under shared resources and here you do not see any model. What I'll do is I'll click on the drop down. So I have two options here. One is to deploy the base model and the other one is to deploy a fine tuned model. And there I can choose from the different options that I have. I have the GPT-40 Mini. We also have GPT-40, GPT-4, Whisper, TTS, and so on and so forth. What we are going to make use of is GPT-40. So I'll just select that and click on Confirm. 
it will take a while and it will open a form for me. Now here if you see the deployment name is GPT-40. I can change it to Copilot Demo GPT model and for the model version I'll let it remain as 13.5.2024. Now by default, the deployment type is set to global standard, but I'll click on the drop down and select standard. What it will do is, if you look here, tokens per minute rate limit, which is in thousands. So the highest limit is 10,000. But if you see here, it says the corresponding requests per minute, which is RPM is 60. What I can do is I can simply increase it to 120 and it will also change the tokens per minute rate limit, which has now become 20,000. I'll let remain the content filter to default V2 and hit on deploy. Now, before I do that, if you see here, enable dynamic quota is also enabled. So we are good with all these settings. I'll click on deploy. Now it will take a couple of minutes for the deployment. Now you see here, the deployment is complete and it gave the name as Copilot Demo GPT model. These are the different settings that we had provided earlier. Here, it shows the key as well as the target URI, which is the endpoint. But remember, this is not the actual URI that we will be working on because it is specifically for chat. So what we need to do is we need to create assistance. To do so, I'll click on assistance first. And now here it will show the deployment that we had created and it will by default give an assistant name, which is assistant 371. I don't need to change that, but you can definitely do it if you are creating multiple different assistants for different purposes. Now under prompt, we have instructions. I'll paste in the prompt for this assistant to work on. It says you are a customer service assistant for managed services. Respond in a friendly and helpful tone with concise answers in not more than 100 words. For any user request, for raising a service request, do not make any assumptions about what values to use for the required parameters. Ask for clarification if the user's request is ambiguous and the required parameter values are not provided by the user. Answer only with the facts. So what it will be doing is, under tools, I'll be defining some functions and within the functions, I will be defining certain required parameters and looking at those parameters and based on the prompt that I've just provided, this assistant will be asking the questions and the follow up questions regarding the parameter values based on which it will process the request. Now that the prompt has been completed, I'll move on to the next tab, which is tools. Under tools, I have different options. One is for the file search. I can add the files. Similarly is for the code interpreter. I can add those files as well. So if I have a Python code, which we can use for analysis and summarizations and depending upon other business needs, I can add those files here and I can ask the questions and based on that file, it will be able to bring out the answers for us. As of now, we don't need that. What we need is the functions. So let me go ahead and click on add functions. If you look here, it will give you the format in which the function needs to be created. Although it is very light and dim, but I'll zoom in a little and hopefully you will be able to read out. It says the name, the description, the parameters and the type of the parameter. And finally, it says required, which are the parameters which are mandatory to be filled. So here I will be first creating a function that will help me to create a shared mailbox. So I'll just scroll up. If you see, I've given it a name of get shared mailbox. I've given a description which says raise a shared mailbox service request with the following parameters, shared mailbox name, mailbox alias, email ID, permissions for full access, send as and calendar access. Ask for the parameter values, if the user does not provide the parameter values from the user with the follow up questions. So that is a description also, which I've given here. So for the parameters, we have different ones. We have the shared mailbox name, the alias, the email ID, along with their types and the description. If I scroll down, similar is the case with full access, senders access, as well as the calendar access. I'll scroll further down. And if you see here, it says required. And under required, I have specifically mentioned that all the parameter values are mandatory to be provided by the end user. 
Now that this is done, I can click on save and it will create a function with the name of get shared mailbox. We can similarly create another function. So I'll click on add function and I'll just paste in the JSON for another function with the name set mailbox quota. What it will do is it will set the mailbox quota in exchange online. So supposedly you have the mailbox quota set at 50 GB. This will help you to increase or decrease the quota for your mailbox. So that is what it says within the description as to raise a service request for setting the mailbox quota of a user on exchange online with the following parameters. So all those parameters are mentioned here. If you scroll to the left and then scroll down under parameters as well, we have the email ID for which the quota needs to be changed. Then we have the issue warning quota, the prohibit send quota, as well as the prohibit receive quota. So all those are described along with their type. And if I scroll down further, we have the required property as well, which lists all the mandatory parameter that the user needs to provide a value for. Once that is done, I'll click on save. Now that the assistant has been created and configured, let's see how it works. So what I'll do is I will just say that I wish to create a shared mailbox and let's see how it responds. It says, sure, I would be happy to help with that. Could you please provide the following details? It is asking me for the name, the required alias, the required email ID, along with all the other permissions like full access, send as, as well as calendar access. Let me do one thing. I'll just provide the email ID and wait for the response and see what it does. Wow, now it says, got it. I still need the following information, the name of the shared mailbox, the required alias, along with those three permissions. So it is able to recognize that I've already provided the email ID and the remaining five mandatory parameters are still left. And it will keep on asking me follow up questions until and unless all the required parameters are given. So let us do the next step. This time we'll be providing the name and the alias for this email ID. And I will hit enter. It says, thank you. I still need the following information. So it is able to recognize all the required parameters and also the inputs that is provided by the end user. And based on the user's response, it is able to ask the follow up questions. And that's what we are going to use in Copilot. What happens is in Copilot, usually when you are creating a topic with the Copilot, it will ask you the hard coded questions. It can form a question and you can give the variations to that, but it is not a generative question. So for that, we are making use of Azure OpenAI's assistance functionality. Now, one final thing we need to do, we need to get the endpoint URI as well as the API key. For that, what we can do is we can simply click on view code and it will open the complete code along with the endpoint URI as well as the API key. So what I can do is I can just copy the endpoint URI and put it on a notepad. And similarly, I can copy the API key as well. And this will be used while we are communicating from Copilot via Power Automate Flow. So we are done with this. We'll just close it. Before we end this video, let me show you one more thing. What we can do is we can get the endpoint URI and the key from the Azure AI services as well. So I'll click on that. I'll click on Azure OpenAI and from the Azure OpenAI service that I have created, I can click on it. And once we are there, we have the keys and endpoint. If I click on it, it will show me the same value. It has key one as well as key two, along with the location and the region and the endpoint. So I can copy the endpoint from here and the key as well. In the next video, we will make use of Copilot Studio to create a Copilot chatbot and then try to use Microsoft Flow to integrate with the Azure OpenAI service. See you there.